Hi, I'm Dr. Brenda Miller Chambliss. I am the First Lady of the Embassy Christian Center, Church of God in Christ in Murphy, and now coming August 5th, Silva, North Carolina. I tell you, after six years, God has brought Dr. Will and I from Florida, still have our roots there, our ministry plan is there, and he brought us to this area, and we wondered, God, why would you bring us here? He brought us here to be who we are and do what we do, and that is edify the body, reach the lost, and proclaim and promote the Holy Ghost. And I tell you what, that's what we're here about, and we're inviting you to come out and join us. Now, I want to say this, especially for those of you that have been in the Murphy area, Hayesville, Hiawassee, Blairsville, you know, oh, I'm going to come and I'm going to be a part. What don't get jealous now because we're branching out over in Silver where God is getting ready to do something over there. I tell you, the power of God is coming to Silver. So if you are in or near Silver, Cullowhee, Waynesville, Franklin, Cherokee, and Dillsboro, and there was another one, whatever it is, anywhere in that area, come in and be with us. I'm going to go today, I tell you, it was a powerful word. I am also, besides First Lady, I'm the Director of Media Ministries for the church and the ministry, and you can make sure you go to our websites and look at uh, WHIM TV. We actually have a second channel, WHIM TV Music and WHIM TV Travel. And then there's Bodybuilders TV, which was that foundational channel that we launched 18 years ago to promote our Bodybuilders Television Network. That is 12 subscription channels. Those channels will help us to support our evangelistic and media outreach channels because we don't charge airtime or any of that. It's all in-house expense, but also it helps us to promote and undergird the Embassy Liberia Missions. Our pastor over there is Pastor Moses Dean. We've been over there since 2014. But listen, I'm saying all that because, you know, sometimes when people are coming in, people think that you're new. No, we're not not new. We're not new. We've been in this area for six going into our seventh year. And in Florida, Dr. Will and I have over 40 years of ministry experience. But God is doing something in Western North Carolina. People, it's going down up in the mountains. I'm going to go to today's message. You've got to hear it. I, I love my husband and I'm, I'm blessed by his ministry. But I told him today, uh, culturally, culturally, some of you may understand this. I'm like, man, I was going to take my shoe off and throw it at you. That meant that's just how good it was. And you are going to be blessed by this as well. Listen, tune in. If you are in any of our driving areas, if you are within 30 miles and 30 minutes of our silver location, come and be with us starting Sunday, August 5th. 10 o'clock a.m., we have Sunday school. Yes, a child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Sunday school. We believe in Sunday school to train up. We are empowering a generation through the power of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> and it starts with Sunday school. 10 a.m. Then we have a 10 minute break and we prepare for morning manna. Why do we say morning manna? Yes, we have praise, we have worship, but it's about the word of God. We're good God. Manna is coming down from heaven. Manna that will feed your heart, your spirit. Manna that will change you, impact your life, impact your family, impact your finances, impact your faith. You need to be at the Embassy Christian Center, Church of God in Christ, Silver, North Carolina, Murphy, North Carolina. Come in, make plans to visit, be a part of one of these services. If you can't, or you're gonna come to one of our annual events, I want you to make sure you do this. Go to our websites. This is a sneak preview. They're not supposed to be promoted until August 1st. But listen, we've done a lot of work. Go to our two websites. You'll see the information on the screen. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blown away by what God is doing. Now listen, I'm getting ready to go to the message that God gave to my husband, Dr. Will, on the day. It was powerful. It was anointed. It blessed me first before it blessed anybody else that was here. It blessed me. The anointing 
is so on Dr. Will, and we just had his official installation, and we're going to be showing that as well and some of the other shows on this week, <clears throat> but the anointing that is resting upon my husband, I see now why God gave me this media ministry so I can set the platform for people to be able to view the word that God has given him, whether they're here in the mountains or watching from around the world and coming to one of our annual events. I'm telling you, you got to go to the website and see it. Well, listen, don't forget Sunday, August 5th, join us at our new location going into the Silva area, Silva, Waynesville, Franklin, Cullowee, Whittier, Cherokee, all of those areas in between Dillsburg, come out and be with us. Our focus is on family matters. Today, Dr. Will was sharing on family matters and the necessity of the Holy Ghost for your family. Hey, I'm going to come back at the end and just invite you once again, be blessed in Jesus name. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm Dr. W.C. Chambers III. I am the senior pastor of the Embassy Christian Center Church of God in Christ in Murphy and in Silver, North Carolina. So glad you are being a part of this teaching today. God bless you. We're going to begin in our study teaching uh, on the, the foundation uh, topic is going to be on family matters. But also, we know that we're living in a time where like never before, we need the power of God. We need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. So we're going to be talking about the necessity of the Holy Ghost in these last days and dealing also with family matters. All of us that are a part of the body of Christ know that we are a part of the God's family, but we also have our own natural family as well. So everyone's dealing with uh, from marital issues to we're dealing with family problems. We're dealing with domestic issues. Uh, families are being uh, fractured and broken up because of many different reasons. Uh, we haven't deal with our young ladies are getting pregnant out of wedlock. Young men are incarcerated dealing with drug addictions, alcohol addictions, all types of addictions. Uh, the family is under in crises and we're in crisis mode. So today we're going to just touch a little bit about how we can get and gain victory over these life problems and life situations. We're in this world, the Bible says, but we're not of this world. But yet, those of us that are say we're affected by the world and what's going on and what's <laughs> happening in the world. What's going on around us does affect our lives. It affects our, our uh, families. Our kids have to deal with bullying in school. I never thought it would be a day that we have to continue to deal with bullying. Kids are being bullied because of the way they look. Uh, because of the way they dress or sexual orientation, whatever they're dealing with, they're dealing with there's dealing with bullying. So people are being bullied. They call it cyberbullying, where they get on Facebook and get on different social media sites and begin to bully our children. So yes, there's so many things that we're having to deal with today. But it's good to know that every problem and every circumstance that we face. The answer is in God's word. The Bible says that the answer is in his word. God deals with every area. That, that's one thing I love about the scriptures and about the way God have designed things. Not only did he create everything, and he is the manufacturer of everything. He gave us a manual, which is, which is his word. And this manual addresses every issue that we will face. If we really truly believe God's word, take it for what it says, I guarantee you that you'll find answers to the problems of life. Will it solve all problems? Listen, the Bible said uh, with, with faith, nothing is impossible with God. God can do anything. God can, I, I tell you, God can, he can change uh, your situation. He can turn that thing around or he can give you the power to go through. There are times when the, when the apostles prayed and God would not only would he answer at times, there are other times that he would just give them the, the grace to go through it. 
Some of you are trying to find outs and trying to avoid certain things. But some things I believe God allows us to go through for the making of us. Amen. You, need, you need to be strengthened, my friend. You, you need to be able to weather those storms. You know, sometimes God allows us to go through those storms. Thorn, storms of life come. But it's good to have an umbrella <laughs> or it's good to have a shelter. Like the old folks used to say, uh, I've got to hide in place. You know, I got to hide in place. So sometimes you just need to hide in place. You need to be able to find your land of Goshen, a place where God can hide you and secure you, protect you so that you can weather that storm. So I'm not here and I'm not trying to uh, give you all the answers to make your life easy. But I, I want to let you know that you're not alone. And Jesus even said, Lo, I'm with you always. Even unto the end of the earth. He said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. Isn't that a good uh, feeling to know? Isn't that comforting to know that Jesus said, I'm with you? I'll be with you in the storm. I'll be with you through the rain. Through sickness and through pain. Jesus said, I'll be with you. Amen. He, he didn't stop Daniel from going in the lion's den. <laughs> but when he got in the lion's den, he calmed the lions down. When, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace, he didn't, he didn't stop them from going in the fiery furnace, but he took the heat out of the fire. Isn't that good to know? <laughs> God can take you through whatever you might be facing. Whatever storm, whatever problem you find yourself in, God has the answer for you. And the answer can be found in his written holy word. I, 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 can't, I can't say it enough that, 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 that we need God's word. So oftentimes when we run into problems, we run to our best friend and we find our confidant. And we confide in people. But have you stopped to pray? Did you talk to God about it? Did you, did you consult the Lord and ask him for, for guidance? Ask the Lord for help. Call out unto God. The Bible says for us to go boldly, come boldly before his throne of grace where we can find help in the time of need. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The Bible says call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and return unto the Lord. And he will abundantly part. God will give you strength. God will give you power. He will give you what you need. Hallelujah. Amen. For this time. So I have some scriptures I want to go through and I want to go to. Amen. And I want to share. I, I want to share. Praise God. I want to go to Acts chapter. Acts chapter 1. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to begin reading at verse number 4. It says, and, and beginning, um, I'm going to say, yeah, verse 1, I, I will we'll go to, to 1, but I'm going to just go, go, go down to verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. He was talking to the disciples. Jesus gave commandment to his apostles and told them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. This is Acts chapter one, verse four. He told them to wait or tarry in the city of Jerusalem for the promise of the father. The Holy Ghost is the promise of the father. This is where we want to build a foundation from. This is where I want to start out. He is the promise of the father. The Holy Ghost. And he said, For the tarry in the city of Jerusalem till you, uh, uh, till you receive the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me. You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. This is what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. It says that God gave them a mandate. That they should not depart from Jerusalem. Somebody say location, location, location. It's important where you are. <laughs> location is very, very important. 
It was significant because it was prophetic because prophetically, this is where everything was going to take place. They couldn't be, they couldn't be over in Galilee. They, could, they couldn't go over to uh, Philippi, Rome. Uh, they had to be in Jerusalem, the city of God. They had to be where God had ordained for them to be. He said, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. Why am I dealing with this? Because I recognize that the foundation of everything that, that we have to deal with as being born again, spirit filled, tongue talking, children of God, everything hinges on the power of the Holy Ghost. And we need to have therefore come together. They asked him, saying unto him, say, Lord. When would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? What was pressing their heart, and this is from, from Jewish uh, teaching and from all of the rabbis and all of the theology, the things that were going on in that time, they were concerned about the restoration of Israel, the restoration of the kingdom, the restoration of Jews uh, 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 kingdom, the, 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 the platform that, 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 that they were campaigned upon and what they was looking for and what most Jews at that time were looking. They were looking for the restoration of the Jewish nation, the Jewish nation being restored. They've gone through great trial. They have been ex exiled and they've been enslaved and, and they've gone through in, in Jerusalem. That, so how, how is this going to apply to what they all knew, what was most important, what was pressing on their heart? They say, Lord, when would thou restore again the kingdom to Israel? To Israel. And people, to us, us today in our Western culture, we can't relate to that. Amen. But they can because uh, if you read Jewish history and Jewish folklore, you realize that they always been in search for the restoring of the kingdom to Israel. And Jesus said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the season which the father have put in his own power. It's not, it's not for you to know that right now. Even though that's a very good uh, subject, that's, that's very important. I know it's important to you and it's important to every Jew at that time. But Jesus was establishing his kingdom and he was establishing the premise for them so that they could be empowered to bring change and restoration to the world. He says, it's not for your guys to know the times of the season which the Father had put in his own power. So basically God, God is saying, hey, I got that under control. It's in my power, but it's not time for that as of yet. But this is what he said in verse 8. But ye shall receive power. Hallelujah. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost parts of the earth. I'm not concerned about a governmental rule. I'm concerned about a kingdom rule that's going to be governed by kings and priests. You're going to be you're going to be empowered as individuals. It's not going to be a governmental rule. This is going to be a spiritual rule with with spiritual leadership, with God being the head, and all of these other things are going to fall under that. You're going to receive power, my friend. God want to empower you with the power of the Holy Ghost so that you can bring about change in your world. Hallelujah. You'll be, power, you'll be empowered by the Holy Ghost. This is the whole thing, people. This is the foundation. Uh, how can I express it even better? Uh, a lot of times we try to uh, reason it out. or We try to figure it out in our own strength in our own abilities. We, we're trying to work things out and make it easy for us to do. But God is letting us know he's established his kingdom. Amen. And it's established upon righteousness. So all people that, that come to God must understand God has a rule. He has governing <laughs> factors. He, he has order and structure. People are doing their own thing now. <laughs> this is a free form, free form flowing. People doing what they, whatever feels good, whatever sounds good. And, and all this talk radio, I want to deal with this right now. We're in an uh, era of social media and we, we have all of this free access. Everybody have an opinion. 
Uh, everyone wants to talk about what they think, how they feel, what well, I don't see. First of all, it don't matter what you think. <laughs> I, I don't really want to know what you think. I want to know what God's word says. I, it don't matter to me how it make you feel. <laughs> it don't matter how you feel. It, it all hinges upon what God's word says. A lot of people are talking, even in Jesus' day. The Bible said Jesus told him, asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they were beginning to tell him all of the, the things that they were hearing that was going on uh, in, in that time and what, what people were saying in the streets and uh, in the marketplace or in at the temple or whatever. They said it was, some say that you are Jeremiah, some say that thou art Elijah and, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus turned the question to the disciples. He said, well, who do you say that I, the Son of Man? man am. I hear what everybody else saying, but what do you think? Uh, who do you, do you know me? <laughs> and that's the whole thing. I don't want to hear a bunch of talk about what other people think and how they feel. What do you say? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Has Christ come into your life? Can you testify of the things that he's done for you? Not what he's done for someone else and not how he's blessed in other people's lives. How has he bring, brought change into your life? Who, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? And the Bible says Jesus uh, 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 was sharing that with everyone and he left the floor open. And, and, and the Bible said Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter got a revelation. <laughs> it wasn't that he knew. The Holy Ghost, once again, I told you that everything is, is built upon the foundation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost uh, inspired Peter to speak and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus responded to Peter's uh, words and he said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. What is he saying? He said, God gave you that revelation of who I was. It wasn't because of your intellect. It wasn't because of your pedigree. It wasn't because you're great or you're smart or you're more intelligent than anyone else. No, Peter. God gave you a revelation. The Holy Ghost revealed to you who he was. And that's what we need. Everybody need a revelation of who Jesus is. Everyone, every family need to know who Christ is in their life. Not what someone said next door or not what you heard in school. It's what you know personally one-on-one. -on -one. He told them to wait. He told them to tarry in Acts 1 until they be endued with power from on high. Until they receive the promise of the Father which he said, you've heard of me. There's a lot of people that have heard about it. It don't, you know, it don't surprise me that people know about the things of God or they've heard about the power, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit. They've seen it and some have mocked it and say, oh, they're, they're crazy. It don't take all of that. They're just religious. They're holy rollers. They're, they're sanctified folk. They're, you know, so they've named it all these things. <laughs> but if they went to the scriptures, they realized that all of those are names or things of opinions of people. But until I came to know Jesus for myself, I understood why people said what they said and felt the way they felt because they was anti-God and it was anti-Christ and anti-spirit. There are people today that love God, say they love God, and they serve God. They say they serve God and they go to church and they say they are a child of God or a Christian, but they fight against the spirit of God. They deny the power. The Bible says from such turn away. They're, they're denying the truth. The Bible said that they do err not knowing the scriptures. There are people, brothers and sisters in Christ, they're in error. It's not that God don't love them, but they're in error. It's not that God has not called them and have not a call upon their life, but they're walking in error.